Thank you for watching. This is going to be a really brief uh, video, at least I hope it's going to be brief, about uh, my essentials for painting. I know that in my, all of my regular painting videos I tend to skip a couple of steps ahead just because uh, I feel like I covered something already uh, or whatnot. But actually the last full, uh, full on essentials video in which I explain absolutely everything, I hope at least, uh, what I use is like a couple of years ago and shit changes over time so uh, no different in this case what I did a couple of years ago may have changed by now now th uh, this is how I do it maybe you do it differently but uh, if you're new to paint if you're curious about how I do it then uh, this is perhaps the video for you I do not use any airbrushes I only use uh, rattle cans I like to keep it simple I also like the limitations of uh, rattle cans because they force you to think a tiny bit uh, more create creatively Cre yeah they force you to think a tiny bit more creative that's what I wanted to say so <laughs> um, in that uh, all of those limitations you need to you need to think out of the box a whole lot of times and to me that's cool because that's that's sort of my hobby the whole thinking out of the box thing um, first things first you uh, get a shell and 9 out of 10 times it's not cut um, so people tend to buy a Lexan scissors don't do it because you really you don't need them all you need is this this is the same scalpel that you're going to use to cut out your entire paint job afterwards and uh, you just want to have a steady hand uh, you want to score the legs and to the depth where you can actually uh, maybe you need to give like two three passes before it actually will snap if you force it a tiny bit uh, and that's also something that you really want to want to try out um, so when you do have a cutoff keep them just go uh, try how deep you need to cut for paint and how deep you need to cut to actually score it to the point where it will snap sometimes people hit me up they've done a really cool paint job and then they run it and they're disappointed because their shell becomes a puzzle that's you cutting too deep so you really want to find that balance between cutting so deep that the lexum will snap and uh, just cutting like uh, deep enough so you can actually peel your tape or your liquid mask whatever it is um, so try that uh, system just uh, cut all the way around your shell uh, snap off the legs and they that you're not going to use keep that scrap because that is uh, handy for also for uh, color testing and stuff like that uh, and try to cut as straight as possible now when you've done that and always legs and scissors I always think that the wheel wells end up super wonky and ugly looking so uh, don't buy those that's just some sort of hobby store trick you do not need them um, after that if you cut as clean as possible then you don't need to do a whole lot of this uh, sanding this is a protoform sanding block this is one of the there's a hair on it this is one of the <laughs> must-have tools uh, in your arsenal they do not uh, cost a lot of money it's a velcro system you can uh, buy replacement uh, velcro uh, sanding band uh, thingies you can use it to uh, make those edges on the bottom a bit straighter you can use them for the wheel wells uh, everything this is one hell of an awesome tool I've been using this for a couple of years right now and I love it uh, you can even do pl deburr plastic with it which obviously I've done by the looks of this one but I don't advise that just, just keep it for your Lexan same with uh, this one body reamer um, just keep it for your Lexan in the past as well I have messed up and I was like oh, I just need to ream that hole in, in the plastic a tiny bit bigger the minute you do it you can chuck this thing away so also if you have friends who just want to borrow your body reamer for a hot minute don't let them do it because most likely you're gonna fuck it up keep it for Lexan purposes only uh, then you end up with something that's so this one is masked but uh, it doesn't really matter something that looks like this uh, which is a completely cut body with uh, the body holes uh, in there and you have already test fitted it and positioned it and everything is sanded what the sanding also does is it avoids that your shell will rip uh, so if you have a tiny uh, cut in there and you can sand that away that will avoid that cut actually turning into a tear so that's a good tip right there for you um, what you want to do then is you want to wash it out you want to use one of these uh, scotch bright kitchen sponges and you want to use the coarse side to wash it out you also want to use hand soap and you want to use warm water what I do 9 out of 10 times that's also why I don't film it, it I just take them in the shower with me and I wash them over there rinse them out completely you want to wash the inside and you want to wash the outside um, on the inside you use that, uh, that coarse uh, side of the sponge and the outside you use the softer side uh, also don't 
uh, go scuff up your windows, headlights, uh, um, roof windows, whatever the hell you want to keep clear. Make sure that you do not scuff that up, just the areas that you want to have painted. And the nicer you scuff it up, so for example, this is a trophy truck body, try scuffing it up in the, in the length of the body uh, in a straight lines, uh, it will look nicer afterwards. Um, yeah, so this, not expensive, really worth uh, doing and really worth paying some really close attention to. After that you get some uh, lint-free cloth, like uh, we call it in Dutch, like a theeduk. Uh, everybody has these for the kitchen, uh, especially when they're a bit older, they dry really well and they don't fiber that much. These work great, so just go uh, rob your wife. And make sure that you uh, have one that's completely clean, no contaminants on there because you just got rid of all of them. And after that it is uh, masking time. There's two ways to mask. Uh, one of them is a liquid mask. A liquid mask is what I used on the bomber over here. Um, or you can use regular tape uh, if it's a bit simpler like I did on the, on the Yeti Score Trophy truck. The difference between the two of them. This is quite a lot of work to apply it, uh, the tape, because you need to push out all of the air pockets and whatnot. Um, it's harder to see through, so if you do have a design that you put on the outside, then you need to make sure that you have some backlighting. I will get to that. Um, this takes time as well. The fast mask, you want to have like a cheap uh, brush, just rinse it out after every time after you use it, and you will be able to, to use it for a very long time. Uh, the liquid mask, I put four coats on, let them dry until uh, the shell is completely transparent. This is fast mask, this was the first time I used fast mask. You can use whatever you want, Bob Dively, Bitty Design, uh, Sign Strip, I've used most of them in the past. Uh, right now I'm using fast mask, I really have no brand of preference uh, apart from the Bitty Design smelling like uh, baby puke. Uh, but this is great stuff. If you want to have really tiny desi design details and uh, you need to cut really fine lines, uh, the liquid mask is the way to go. If you have like uh, a quickie, uh, you go for the tape. Um, the tape. Once you're done with your, uh, with your masking and then once you have sort of established what you want to do, um, I always go to my computer, uh, Photoshop something, or uh, scan something, whatever uh, you have. Uh, print it in reverse like I did over here. This was the design for the bomber. Um, really simple, you put the lettering on. You find out what other lines you want to use in your design. So, well, sorry, still bad, muting myself. Uh, this, this whole print part, that's kind of vital, especially for the, for the writing. Um, I know this may not make any sense, but you print it in reverse and once you stick it to the outside of the body, the minute you start cutting on the inside of the body, uh, you can see through it, it's really clear. You have no problems tracing every line and making sure that it comes out, uh, well, as perfect as you can get it. For the lines, you want to have uh, a set square. I've had this one for almost two decades, it has served me well. I snapped one corner off and that is really handy because it makes sure that you can really get in, uh, in, in all the nooks and crannies. If you use the set square on the inside just to get some really straight lines, I try not to. Uh, but if you do use it to cut along it, uh, chances are that you're going to nick it. And uh, the minute that happens that the sanding block comes in really handy again because you can just uh, straighten it out. Um, also something that you want to have is this really cheap ruler just to put your lines on the outside. The marker that I use, a lot of people use uh, Sharpies, I haven't had the best of luck with those. Uh, I use this, this is an editing uh, marker, I have no idea what it's for, if it's like for CDs or something. Uh, it's an OHP marker, permanent marker. Uh, it's the 142M, I bought this thing three years ago and it's still working. Um, so that's what I use for like the, the largest lines. Now if you put the lines on the outside of the body, you don't have to get them perfect straight away because you are going to trace absolutely everything with the blade on the inside. So if you have something that needs a tiny bit of tweaking, you can do that the minute you start cutting. Blade. Um, Cheap one, metal insert, no flex almost, uh, the cheapest blades that you can get. Uh, the only tip I can give you is the minute you feel and you sense it instantly, the minute you sense it starts tearing instead of cutting, put a new one in and just make sure that you have a ton of them laying around. Once you're done uh, with cutting all your fine paintwork, just keep that blade because the next time 
when you cut an entire body you want to use that blade because you can throw it away after you're done with the whole snapping and scoring thing um, so getting one of these and getting a good one that's like really rigid with like a metal insert uh, is pretty much key when you've cut everything out you also use the blade to lift the tape or lift your liquid mask just so you have a start to start peeling it uh, which you will do with a pair of tweezers uh, these as well very basic nothing special uh, just to have a look in your wife's beauty case or in her purse pretty sure you can find one of these uh, and just make it your own onto paint what do I use I only use Tamiya paint Tamiya doesn't pay me they don't even know that I exist but uh, Tamiya is the only brand that works for me so I've been using their paint with great success over the past couple of years because I've never had paint coming off of a body um, and with other brands that has happened to me Order of paint, uh, always try to go darkest color first, unless you are painting, for example, uh, a metallic or uh, an aluminum, because those need to be backed with a black. So if you can think a tiny bit ahead, uh, it will save you that one extra step of uh, going black, then uh, blue uh, metallic or blue aluminum or champagne aluminum, and then you need to back it with black again. If you can reverse that and uh, use the black when you need to use the black, uh, it, that will save you a tiny bit of paint. Don't go too thick on your uh, paint coats because that's also something that people tend to do. After you're done with all your uh, medium toned and super dark colors, uh, second to last is always the fluorescent color. So whether that's a uh, yellow, orange, uh, green, whatever, uh, these do, do these uh, second to last and back them with a white. I know there's people who back them with silver. For me, that really never works. They never turn out the way that they're supposed to look when you look at the lid. So just back them with white. Uh, white always uh, last color if you can if you can uh, use white as a last color always uh, way easier as well to clean up your shell afterwards if you do uh, wash your RCs occasionally white will make sure that you can actually tell if you got all the muck off let me see if I can do this without completely ruining everything <laughs> paint mask uh, or a respiratory mask whatever you call them you can of course use those uh, toss away versions uh, even those are better than using absolutely nothing I invested in uh, this one I think it cost uh, it cost a fair bit of money I think I paid almost 200 bucks with uh, the replacement filters uh, having a few boxes of those this is worth every penny because you do not want to risk your uh, your health and uh, safety just because you're having a good uh, time with your hobby so get one of these uh, if you can and if not get those uh, throwaway masks because they will uh, save your lungs in the in the long run last but certainly not least is uh, this one this is the ps55 flat clear there's a lot of hobby stores in the states that claim that this is discontinued believe me it isn't i buy dozens of these cans i use it for absolutely everything especially for uh, interiors in this case with uh, the yeti score trophy truck i used it on the entire outside of the body uh, this is a great weapon uh, to have just to make sure that you can put all those details in that you want to have because for example if you want to fake rubber wheel arches, uh, uh, plastics, uh, rubberized beads around windows, this is key. You want to have this. Also on the inside if you want your people to look not like they're coming from some, from some really weird gay party where everybody is wearing latex. This is the way to flatten it out and to make sure that it actually appears normal. So PS55, uh, if your hobby store claims that they don't make it, they're lying to you. They sure as hell make it. I was in a warehouse last week where they had tons of this stuff standing around. Um, also, the PS55, if you have a TS color, so if you have a plastic color that you want to use, this is a great one. Uh, spray the PS55 on the inside of the body just to give it sort of like an etching and you can use the TS color afterwards to go over it so that way you can end up with uh, colors that are not available in the PS range which is the polycarbonate range but that are available in the TS range so this is a great, uh, a great can of paint to do a ton of tricks with you may wonder uh, why I'm leaning on this, uh, this lamp this is a regular builder's lamp turning it on real quick uh, four pipes this is what I use to do the cut work um, especially when I'm working with 
with the tape designs just because they're a tiny bit harder to see through. So you need to have something that's uh, backlit. This lamp works great. It doesn't become really warm so you can actually lean on it. Makes it really clear to see your design and to hit all those uh, lines that you want to, uh, to hit. And I also use it to dry my bodies in between coats. So the minute I'm done with one coat, I just position the body on this lamp. Uh, turn it on, it stands there cooking for a tiny while. I'll go have a cup of coffee, the minute I come back it is dry and I'm ready for my next coat. These lamps, they're not uh, cheap, they're, it's fluorescent uh, lighting by the way. They're not really cheap, I think I paid 150 bucks for this one, but they're definitely worth the investment. So in, I think in everything that I just showed you, this lamp is actually the most expensive part, uh, but also the best investment that you can, uh, that you can do. Um, well, I think or I hope at least that that sort of covers it. If it doesn't, if you still have any questions, uh, if I did skip something, uh, let me know in the, in the comments box if you have any type of question or have any type of comment. Perhaps you have a great tip for me, something that I haven't thought of and uh, just leave that in the box below. If you have not subscribed yet, please do. It's free. Honest to God, it doesn't cost any money. You can just click that button and you will get uh, the updates on when I release a new video. You will get them in your, uh, in your email, I think, or something. And uh, you can sort of tag along with all of the projects that I'm doing. Currently doing a lot of stuff, a lot of paint work. Uh, I guess that's also why I wanted to make this video, just to make it completely clear that there's really nothing expensive going on. I, I don't use plotters, I don't use any of that stuff. I like just putting in all of the work myself and uh, spending a bit of time on it, a bit of energy on it and uh, getting creative with it and uh, just overall having a great time and seeing uh, the results of my work uh, after. Uh, if you want to be a tiny bit ahead of what I do on uh, YouTube, because every now and then uh, paint jobs and the whole editing of uh, videos takes a tiny bit of time, I have an Instagram account as well and I have a Facebook account, the links are in the description box, so you can uh, find me over there and uh, be a bit ahead of, uh, of what's happening over there. Uh, I hope this was helpful, thank you so much for watching, take care, bye bye. Back on.